Brachytherapy is a type of radiation treatment or radiotherapy. Brachytherapy in Greek means short, therefore brachytherapy implies delivery of radiation directly in contact with the tumor. This allows a reduced dose in nearby organs, which is still one of the challenges of modern external radiotherapy. The first attempts were just over a century ago with radium needles, but its success was limited due to the lack of technology to allow a safe and accurate delivery of radiation to the right target. The development of ultrasound probes in the 80s allowed real-time assessment of the prostate during the process of insertion of iodine radioactive seeds, which by then had been developed as well in the prostate over the following decade. Starting in Seattle, in the States, in the UK, prostate brachytherapy has been available since the mid-90s and in Lincoln, last month, we celebrated our 10th anniversary and over 500 patients have been treated since then. Yes, very low dose rate or seat implants and high dose rate or HDR temporary implants. Seat implant means the insertion of radioactive seeds in the prostate. Each is very small and between 70 and 100 are placed in order to deliver the required dose to the gland. They stay in for the time being and will deliver a low dose over a period of about 12 weeks whilst the patient is back home. High dose rate requires the insertion of hollow but thin needles in the prostate. And then a single, but now a stronger radioactive source attached to the tip of a wire is pushed in remotely by a computer. And it will travel along those needles for a treatment time between 25 to 35 minutes. The overall procedure time will be between two and two and a half hours. Yes, your oncologist or urologist will discuss and explain to you which might be the most appropriate option. Seat implants are used in patients with a small, moderate risk tumors and HDR implants can be done in men with more advanced or aggressive disease, usually in combination with a short course of external radiotherapy a fortnight later for three or four and a half weeks. They are referred as HDR boosts. Depending on the type of tumor, one type of brachytherapy or another could be offered or discussed. Unfortunately, not all men can have brachytherapy. Patients need to be fit for a general anesthesia and have satisfactory urinary function before the procedure. Seat implants should be done in men with localized, that is a stage 1 or 2, tumors and ideally with non-aggressive type of cancers on the original biopsies. HDR boost implants allow the radiation to reach the capsule and seminal vesicles, therefore a stage 3 patients can be candidates too, whether the biopsy reveals a low, moderate or high risk tumor. Yes, the volume of the prostate at the time of the implant should be no larger than 60 or 70 cubic centimeters. Brachytherapy can follow an initial course of treatment with hormone therapy, which can shrink the prostate in order to allow a good implant to be completed. Brachytherapy is very safe but patient selection is key. For patients without significant problems passing water before treatment and for the right prostate size and the right type of cancer, there really should be no real issues with brachytherapy.
There are different types of prostate cancer. There are some prostate cancers which are confined to the prostate but may not require treatment because they have a low risk of progression. There are other types of prostate cancer which though confined to the prostate at presentation do require the consideration of curative treatment. Within the curative treatments you have radical surgery, external beam radiotherapy and seed brachytherapy as options that can be considered and discussed. When we compare seed brachytherapy with external beam radiotherapy, uh, the external beam radiotherapy patients are requiring radiotherapy over a period of 20 to 39 sessions. And when we compare seed brachytherapy uh, with external beam radiotherapy, one could almost say that seed brachytherapy is a one-off, minimally invasive procedure for which the patient does not require to come again and again to hospital. When we uh, look at um, surgery, seed brachytherapy and high dose rate brachytherapy are both less invasive than surgery and again uh, the risk of uh, certain side effects on quality of life is perhaps a little bit better than with surgery. The risk of impotence is less uh, with radiotherapy than with surgery and uh, there is no risk of stress incontinence uh, with brachytherapy as compared to surgery. Your friend is right in suggesting that both seed brachytherapy and high dose rate brachytherapy are minimally invasive treatments. Seed brachytherapy patients uh, have treatment in the morning have a short stay in hospital after the treatment and are discharged home the same evening. We are moving to a treatment schedule whereby patients who are having seed brachytherapy will only have to come the once to have the implantation of the radioactive seeds and therefore only require one general anesthetic stop. In some cases, uh, as at present, we do uh, proceed with two general anesthetics, the first of which is a short general anesthetic, but the treatment itself is minimally invasive. High dose rate brachytherapy is slightly different. Although it is minimally invasive, patients do stay overnight and they have a catheter that goes into the bladder and stays in the bladder overnight. They have a trial without catheter the following day and get home thereafter. So they are essentially both minimally invasive treatments. Seed brachytherapy patients uh, have their treatment currently over two stages. In the first stage, they come in for a short general anesthetic and have an accurate estimation of the volume of the prostate, the urethra and the back passage. A plan is then correlated with these uh, images. Patients come in four weeks later, they are put to sleep for about an hour very thin needles go through the skin just in front of the back passage into the prostate under image guidance, i.e. real life, real time ultrasound. The implanted seeds stay in the prostate and the needles come out. There's a very small amount of bleeding and the patients go home the same day. High dose rate brachytherapy patients have only the one general anesthetic, but it is a procedure that takes about two to two and a half hours under the single general anesthetic. Once again, some very thin needles go directly into the prostate through the skin in front of the back passage under ultrasound guidance. Once again, the prostate, the water pipe and the back passage are contoured and a plan is created while the patient is asleep to deliver radiation directly into the prostate through these very thin needles. At the end of the procedure, the needles come out and the patient stays overnight with a catheter. Both seed brachytherapy and high dose rate brachytherapy boost are very effective treatments. They have a success rate in terms of curing cancer out at 10 years of 90 to 95% or more. It of course depends on the type of prostate cancer one has to deal with and this would be discussed on an individual basis by the clinical oncologist 
when these treatments are discussed with patients. Both these treatments are minimally invasive. That said, they do require patients to have a general anesthetic. Occasionally, a patient may need a regional anesthetic like a spinal anesthetic. Patients who have seat breaker therapy are able to go home the same day and though there is some discomfort, they can usually manage with oral tablets like paracetamol. Patients who have high dose rate brachytherapy do stay overnight and they occasionally have some discomfort from having a catheter overnight. Nonetheless, as there are very only tiny thin needles that go into the prostate, the discomfort is minimal and is soon over in a day or two. No. High dose rate brachytherapy patients leave the suite without any radiation left within the prostate. In seed patients, however, some radiation treat doses will remain, but this is safe for the patient, for the family, and they can resume normal activity almost straight away when they go home. The seed patients, we actually request them to come the night before. They stay overnight, but on the day of the procedure, they go home. And high dose rate brachytherapy patients, they come on the morning of the procedure and they are requested to stay overnight and majority of them go home the next morning. Within three months, we do a PSA test to make sure that the treatment has been successful and after that they get the PSA done regularly every six months. We do not do any routine scans or any other tests like biopsies and the PSA is the test that we rely on to explain the success of the treatment. After the procedure, there will be some swelling of the prostate. Most of the patients we do prescribe anti-inflammatory and some antibiotics to minimize the swelling. But occasionally patients end up with problems passing urine and may require a short-term catheter. We aim to keep this as short as possible and in patients with high dose rate brachytherapy, we aim to remove the catheter within seven days. But for patients with seed brachytherapy, sometimes it can take up to a month. But the aim is to minimize this as much as possible Radiotherapy to the prostate can affect the sex life after the procedure, but we expect about 60% of those patients who had seed brachytherapy and about 40 to 50% of the patients who had high dose rate brachytherapy to resume normal sexual activity after the procedure. High dose rate brachytherapy with external beam radiotherapy combination is better for patients with locally advanced or aggressive prostate cancer, whereas seed brachytherapy still remains the standard of care for patients with not so aggressive and not so advanced prostate cancer. My name is Chris Clegg. Um, I'm 64 years of age and I was uh, diagnosed with prostate cancer around November last year. Um, went through consultation, different options of what you could have. Uh, basically, there was radiotherapy, there was brachiotherapy with radiotherapy. Uh, so I decided to do the brachiotherapy because apparently the outcome is a lot better. Um, there's a 10% greater chance of recovery without reoccurrence. Um, the brachytherapy itself, once I had the treatment, was painless really. Um, I had no great problems with it. The recovery time wasn't too long after having the actual operation. I was out the following day. I suffered some symptoms of 
uh, leakage or whatever, um, which is to be expected due to the, the nature of the actual operation. Uh, three weeks later, I started radiotherapy. The radiotherapy has been okay, but there obviously the side effects to that. Um, namely, feeling quite tired, uh, your stomach gets upset, uh, your waterworks get a bit uh, tetchy uh, during the time. But throughout, the staff have been absolutely wonderful. Um, if I've ever needed anything or had to discuss anything, they've always helped me out. Uh, you can't fault the staff for so much time that they spend, you know, having the time to talk to you and assist you through the trials and tribulations, what you go through. Uh, my wife has been absolutely marvellous. We've been here every day for five, nearly six weeks, <clears throat> and it's been quite a journey. Um, I've got to say that I'm starting to feel better. Uh, certainly, at first, the first week or so of radiotherapy, I felt brilliant. Then you get the down as you get more and more radiotherapy put into you, and you, you start to suffer, basically. But it's not that bad. You know, the procedure itself, is basically you come here an hour before, you have to drink water, you go for your actual radiotherapy session, which only lasts for about six or seven minutes. It's not very long. The preparation bit takes longer. Obviously, traveling back and forwards, a bit of wearing on the system, but that's the way it is. Um, I'm looking forward to recovery, looking forward to going back to work and getting back to a more normal life again now. The brachytherapy journey usually begins following consultation with the oncologist and a referral for treatment is made. Your first visit to the department is for a urine flow test which requires you to have a full bladder. We then measure the amount of urine and the rate at which it is passed. We then check how much is left in the bladder by ultrasound. Also at this appointment we will ask you some questions about your general health and ask for a list of your current medications. Approximately one month prior to your treatment, you will be sent a letter to come for a pre-op assessment chat and discussion with one of the brachytherapy radiographers. We will fully explain the procedure to you and give you dates and times. We will also complete some tests, such as an ECG, take bloods, do your height and weight and check your blood pressure. You will be given some medication to take prior to your brachytherapy, which will also be fully explained to you. This is a chance to ask any questions or concerns you may have. For seed patients, this is a two-step procedure. The first part is the prostate volume study for seed brachytherapy using ultrasound. You are required to attend for a volume study as a day case where you will be admitted at 7.30 in the morning to the surgical admissions lounge in the main hospital. We will collect you and bring you to the brachytherapy suite for the procedure. You will see the anaesthetist and you will sign a consent form for the procedure. The volume study usually takes an hour. It involves having a temporary urinary catheter inserted. This will be removed from you before you wake up. You will be taken to the theatre recovery area to fully recover from the anaesthetic. From there you will return to the surgical admissions lounge where you will be discharged, providing you can eat, drink and pass urine normally. The second procedure is the insertion of the radioactive seeds where you will be admitted to Waddington Unit, which is the oncology ward, the day before your procedure, usually around 6pm in the evening. The procedure is done in the brachytherapy suite on the Monday morning. It usually takes around two hours. You will have a temporary catheter in place during the procedure. Once the operation has been completed, you will go to theatre recovery again and then back to Waddington Ward. Whilst on the ward, we need to monitor your urine and check for levels of radioactivity. When you are ready to be discharged, a brachytherapy radiographer will come and see you and issue you with an alert card, which details the type of seeds you've had and the dose you have had implanted, along with contact numbers for the department. We will remind you of the radiation protection precautions too. Approximately six weeks following the seed implant, you will return to the oncology department 
for a CT scan and to see the consultant. High dose rate brachytherapy. Brachytherapy is undertaken in the oncology department. You'll be given a morning or afternoon appointment at the pre-op assessment chat. You will be admitted directly to the brachytherapy suite where you will see the anaesthetist and sign a consent form for the procedure with the oncologist. The procedure is done under general anaesthetic and takes approximately four hours. You will have a urinary catheter in place when you wake up. This is kept in overnight and fluid is given by the catheter to irrigate the bladder. Once the operation has been completed, you will go to theatre recovery, then back to a surgical ward for an overnight stay. The catheter will be removed in the morning and once you can pass urine, you will be allowed home. The brachytherapy radiographers will visit you on the ward in the morning.